Okay, so the activity that was given yesterday was activity 12 from page 243. The activity asks, write two or three sentences to explain in your own words what would happen to a population of zebra in a game reserve if all the lions and leopards were removed. Okay, so First thing you're thinking of, okay, the lions and the leopards, they are predators, so predation. And predation regulates the population size. So it keeps the population size of the impala down. Okay, so it keeps the population of the zebras down, the population size. The predator population prevents the prey population from increasing too much by killing individuals of the prey population. So why does it keep it down? Because um, they feed on them, so it kills them. If all the lions and leopards were removed, the zebra population would increase, would increase. Uh, so the zebra population would uh, keep on increasing until the resources such as food and space becomes limited. So what's going to control the numbers then? It's not predation anymore, it will be compa also, which growth would slow down? We saw this when we did uh, logistical growth, and we saw that it increases in population size and then decreases and then reaches an equilibrium at the carrying capacity. If no predation at all occurred, the zebra population would eventually decrease due to a, a shortage of resources and habitat overuse. So as they go along, they would use too many resources and then there would be a decrease eventually in my population size. Okay, so that was activity 12. That was activity 12. That was the activity that you had to do yesterday. So again, what happens to the zebra population if we remove the lions and the leopards? Uh, predation normally regulates the population size. And then um, the, because they eat some of the individuals, if the lions and leopards were removed, the zebra population would initially increase. The zebra population will keep on increasing until the resources start to run out. And then the growth would slow down. And then if no predation occurs, the population would eventually increase and then decrease a little bit or even a lot, depending on um, how much resources there are and if it's overusing the resources. And so the populations affect one another. Now, today we're gonna to take a look at competition more specifically. And we're going to take a look at two different types of competition, interspecific and intraspecific competition. That just gives an introduction to the content that you have to know. So I just want to get to this page over here. Sorry for deleting the words over there with the picture. So, <clears throat> organisms compete for limited resources. Um, that they need to survive. So plants complete for uh, light, space, water, minerals, and animals complete for food, space, shelter, mates, and water. So please don't think that there's no competition involved when we're talking about plants. They compete for sunlight, they compete for, uh, for water, and that's one of the main problems when, when you bring in um, and you'll see later this year when we go through human impact, when we bring in alien species. Now, that doesn't mean species from, from Mars. That means uh, species that are not indigenous to a country. When we bring them in, they have no natural predators in the area. And so especially if they are not adapted to an area and use a lot of water, as in South Africa, they actually outcompete the species that are supposed to be there. And so um, there's a lot of competition for things like water and minerals, but also for things like light 
A typical example of this is um, in a rainforest, we find that um, the, the plants tend to grow taller and taller and taller and taller or broader and broader and broader leaves because they actually, they outcompete for the light at the top and the top trees will actually uh, pull, uh, throw sh shade onto the bottom plants and so they, they compete for light. Um, also, we find in rainforests um, that it gets frequently, it's depleted of a lot of minerals because the plants grow so well. They use up all of the minerals. And so there's also a competition for minerals. Um, animals would compete for food, for space, shelter, mates, and water. The functional role and position of a species and the resources it uses within a community or ecosystem is known as its ecological niche. And today we're going to talk about niche partitioning, where we find certain species that live uh, uh, in a certain community in the same ecological area, but they feed on different parts of the, the, the environment. And so they create within a certain area their own ecological niche. But later, a uh, li little bit more later on that. This determines where an organism lives and how it interacts with other members of the community. We're going to see uh, a lot of interaction between certain animals, especially when we're talking about niche partitioning or resource partitioning certain animals that we tend to always find together um, because they eat different parts of a plant and they actually fill different niches within their area. The greater the similarity between ecological niches of the two organisms, the more they're going to get into competition. And that's why we get a lot of intraspecific competition, like what we see over here, when uh, the two where the two zebras are fighting uh, because their niche is exactly the same. And so that's why there will be more competition between individuals of the same species rather than individuals of different species. Okay, so over here we see a typical example of interspecific competition. Now, inter says to me that it's in between different species. So, interspecific competition. Over here, we see um, a lion and some mahina, and they tend to be in. Um, that, this is a typical example of interspecific competition. <clears throat> so, when the two or more species competing for the same resources are, that are in short supply, in this case, for these two, they actually eat the same type of food. They hunt the same type of animals. It occurs when different species occupy similar ecological niches. Not that it's exactly the same, but, but it's similar. And in this case, what is similar between these two is their food source. An example would be when a wild dog, the lion and a hyena compete in tents for impala in an area. The larger lion and hyena often steal wild dog kills and that causes a decrease in the wild dog populations. And we find that um, when we enclose certain areas, like for example, within the Kruger National Park, we find that the wild dog population tends to struggle because these two, the lion and the hyena, tend to outcompete them for that same type of food. Intraspecific competition is like the zebras in our second slide that we went through, or like over here, we've got the hemspock or sable antelope that is then competing. And so it is competition between individuals of the same species. And this is even higher than intraspecific competition because the ecological niche is exactly the same. Okay, so, and especially when we get larger populations, this tends to uh, become um, more frequent. 
And when food is scarce, of course, then they will compete for food. And then also we find that the weaker ones, it's survival of the fittest, the weaker ones will tend to die. Okay, so as a result of, um, I actually had some more pictures here and I wonder whether, oh no, okay, no, I think it's in the second, uh, second presentation, I'll check now. As a result, larger and stronger males in intraspecific competition will establish territories, so areas, they will become territorial and guard them um, and the females in that area. They will keep other males out and so they, this is actually competition for mates and reproduce and pass the genes onto their offspring. This means that not all males are able to reproduce and this helps to keep the population numbers low uh, and reduce the growth of the population. So it's a density dependent factor. So this is a density dependent factor. Uh, and if we take a look at the story of Lion King, it's typically what happens. This is, um, if we, this is, the story of Lion King is typically um, about intraspecific and interspecific competition. It illustrates it quite well. Okay, then let me share my second um, presentation now. Okay, let me just see. There's a question in the chat. Okay, so what is a niche? Okay, so um, I'm going to pull up the second presentation and then I'll discuss what a niche is again. Okay, so a niche is um, if we take a look at an area, and in this area there is uh, certain animals. These are not an artist, so please excuse. And then there's another type of animal here. Okay, so they live in the same area, but they are not necessarily going to be in competition because this one is going to eat from trees and this one is going to eat from the grass and that is a niche the fact that this one um this one eats grass and that one eats trees we call it resource partitioning and because of resource partitioning we find that they create their own niche so a niche is not just the area where you stay in it is also what you eat in that area or what resources you eat in that area, uh, what resources you need and you use in that area, not just food. So a niche is everything that you need within your environment to be able to survive. And the, um, although these two share the same area, their niches are different. So they're part of the same ecosystem, but the niches are different. Okay. Now, in the future content, that's just a summary of everything. So, ecological niche, some species may um, use the same resources within the niche. Like, for example, if you take a look at a cheetah and a lion, they hunt the same prey. Okay, just give me a moment, guys. I'll be back now. Okay, guys, I'm going to be back in uh, two or three minutes. Just hold on, okay? Okay. Um, sorry, wrong one.
There we go. Okay, so interspecific competition may occur from once, um, uh, may cause that one species to leave an area or to disappear completely out of an area and may kill all of the individuals or all um, of a certain uh, group or population, or they, they may move out of the area completely because they're not able to compete successfully with another species. Over here, what we find is that here we have two animals again. Now they live in the same area, but, um, and same ecosystem, but they actually don't feed from the same plants. And even their mouthpieces are made to feed from different types of plants. And so they each have their own fish. So luckily for these two animals over here, they are actually not competing with one another. Okay. When two species with the same niche, ecological niche, occupy the same habitat, we find the competition becomes intense. Over here, we've got a typical example of a lion and the cheetah who are both, uh, they probably will both eat if there's impala or springbok in the area. They'll probably both eat impala or springbok. But now, the lion is much stronger uh, than the cheetah. So what would happen is that they would usually chase the cheetah away from their prey. And I, we actually... I actually saw this happening with my own eyes between a hyena and a, a cheetah. Um, and so the lion population tends to be quite big, but the cheetah population tends to be quite small. And what we find in, in such an example is that if we eliminate the lions from the whole equation, then the cheetah population will start to increase because there is no competition um, for them any longer. And so we typically find that when a, um, a cheetah, uh, if there's any other predators in the area like leopard or um, hyena or lion in an area, and the cheetah catches a prey, it, it doesn't normally take long for a lion to come along or another predator to come along and actually chase that cheetah away from its prey and steal its prey. So resource partitioning is what happens to eliminate that competition. And resource partitioning, what we find is, uh, and especially in South Africa or in our savanna, we find a lot of these examples where we f find certain animals that are normally occurring together. You would typically find in the um, in the Kruger National Park, you would find zebra and wildebeest and impala and warthog in the same area and zebra in the same area as one another. But what happens is that although they almost eat the same food, we find that the zebra will tend to eat Top part of a plant. Let's get another color pen here. Okay, sorry, it's fine. Top part of the plant, the wildebeest will eat the middle part, the impala will eat the bottom part of the plant, and so they actually help one another because they eat different parts of the same plants. And so the zebra comes along, eats that part. So then there's space for the wildebeest to eat that part and he eats it um, all and then the impala can come along and eat the bottom part and then the warthog will come afterwards and he's going to eat the, the root of the plants. And so this is typical of resource partitioning uh, where um, each of them create their own niche within the um, ecosystem because they eat different parts of the ecosystem. We find over here, for example, um, we also find the same with um, giraffe and rhino, uh, the white rhino, where if we take a look at any tree, the giraffe will eat from the top parts of the tree, 
while the rhino, and I'm not really good at drawing rhinos, but I'm not really good at drawing anything, but anyway, uh, the rhino will eat the bottom part of the super white rhino. In plants, we also find resource partitioning. So what is competition normally for plants? A lot of plants, most of the competition is for water. Now we did say they can also compete for sunlight and minerals, but water is a main one, especially in a desert area. And here we have an example of resource partitioning um, within a desert area. And we find that here is one, two, three, four, five different plants. And each of them have a different structure in their root systems. These two tend to have very wide roots so that when it rains, when the rain comes down, they would absorb a lot of water and store that water very quickly within their, their stem. While if we take a look at the other plants, their roots tend to grow deeper down so that they tend to rather feed on the, the bottom water table or underground water, not on the now and then water that falls on the surface of the ground. So that's partitioning of a water resource. Okay, so let's quickly talk about uh, competitive exclusion. And here we have typically what we talked about an alien species in an area, the Fork Jackson tree that outcompetes our local, uh, that comes originally from Australia, and it can outcompete our indigenous acacia trees. And here is a graph showing um, a typical S popular logistical growth of um, certain species. And so this is the first species, second species come in, and the first species, the populations tend to decrease. A third species, species come in, out competes everything, and then species one and species two, all the population size comes down because they out compete the original species. And later in this section, we will also take a look at um, how areas um, change over time when this happened. Um, but that's for a later lesson, okay? people uh, and so when they compete they out compete and we find a decrease increase of one species but a decrease of the other species